All right. So here we are again with wonderful Bruno in Canada in the cold on the vital voices into new earth. And today I'm very happy to be again in dialogue with Bruno as we are talking about being. And being is not just being here, being that being that we are, but being is actually being fully present, sovereign, authentic, and many other things. So Bruno, what is your experience over this last days, I almost want to say, as we are all stepping into 2024? What seems to be the theme for you in the sense of being? I'm stepping in into uh, myself, actually getting to know who I am, not just as an earthling, but as a spiritual being. Which leads me to live my life completely differently. Wonderful. Um, I stop living in terms of uh, I'm born, I die, and it goes blank, and there is nothing before or after. I started living with a consciousness of uh, universal cycles. And I decided to no longer dwell on the past or pay attention to what's presented by the medias in the now. But rather, if I have to focus on something happening in the now, I'll focus on what's my current reality, my actual reality, not the one I perceive because I watch TV and therefore I let that afflict me. No, the one I'm actually living from day to day. I'm on a piece of land surrounded by animals, unless I decide to make voluntarily a uh, choice to get in contact with other humans i'm in contact with nature so why make a big story in my head why uh i should be anxious and stressed because something is happening in the big city or some minister decided to make some decision that potentially if i start focusing on that will start making me feel absolutely out of this world livid and feel unfree and unable to do this or unable to create that. No, I, I, I had it with those negative ways of thinking. I decided to spend my time in creating the world I want to actually live in. Instead wow. of complaining about what I don't like, I decided to create what I would like. Exactly. And I feel this is a very valid point. Many of us are really confronted with that. Many of us, and especially stepping into in general into a new year is always like that. But this new year, of course, has a lot more Aquarian influence. We are moving ahead with new earth, with all these beautiful concepts. And the only way we're having it is by being it. So I really love what you're saying. Yes, there might be a show going out on the outside here, but actually this is not my reality. And actually I am not just that being that comes here to be born, to live and to die. And this is very much what separated us initially from being spiritual beings or being in harmony with our soul, with our spirit and with source. So, it's beautiful that more of us coming back into nature. I'm not as sovereign and autonomous as you are. You know, I'm still having light and all these other things. But I, as you know, I also live in nature. And one of the beautiful things is really being in harmony with nature. And what we're learning there and what you're saying as well, your animals, they don't really worry about tomorrow. No, exactly. And I'm going to give you an example as of where I try to create a new way of being. So I have chicken and I have geese. Geese will bully the chicken. But geese, both, both birds are very smart. Differently, with the geese, um, they're more easily trainable than the chicken. Because of the way they think and, and you can actually basically talk to them like humans. However, to understand their language is a whole different story. And to try to find documentary that explain the body language and the quacking and this and that is, I don't know, I haven't found anything that was really of value for me to translate what they're trying to tell me. So I decided to say, okay, 
instead of worrying about this, how can I learn from them? Like, how can I let the universe put me on the trail of finding what they're trying to tell me? So you see, now I'm, I'm far in my mind from what's happening on the public scene. I, I'm, I'm not even there. Oh. I'm sitting with my geese. I'm looking at them and I say, okay, here's the deal. I don't really understand you fully. I, I get some parts, but I don't get like word for word what you're trying to tell me. So please help me. If go, your quacking is not making any sense to me, can you please use body language or something? And they started pointing it towards what they, they meant to say. So all of a sudden I realized, oh, they want water, they want hay, they want this, they want that. And they want to say thank you too. It's so cool. But it took me a few days to just sit, observe. Uh, I didn't spend days at a time. I spent a few minutes here and a few minutes there. But within the course of a few days, I started learning more and more of what they meant. By allowing it to happen. I didn't tell myself, oh... I have a human brain. I don't have a bird brain. What do I know about bird language? I didn't limit myself like that. I thought to myself, hmm, maybe I have a translator in my head that I don't know of. Maybe I can create one. Maybe I can just learn how this works. I've been able to learn other languages before. Why can't I learn bird language? Why not? So by giving it a possible, uh, by creating a, a, this possibility to be, and then it happens. It materializes. And then I'm like, okay, well, can I then say that I don't speak bird? Or do I have to allow the, for the potential that it is possible to actually gain new skills? Exactly. And I live in that beautiful set of mind to try to put at rest my anxieties and my angers over misunderstandings of the universal unfolding of life on this planet for now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is so beautiful because when we unlearn what we think, what should be, like if you, if somebody, I mean, who wants to learn geese language for a starter? When do you step beyond that limitation of saying, well, a human brain and a bird brain don't match or whatever? You, you first step into a space of taking away the limitation of how the mind of humans work. Then mm -hmm. you have to took a, a lesson of unlearning. And for many people, they say actually that unlearning is the highest form of learning because you're no longer stuck in how to approach something because this is how you have learned it, because this is how people saying it, but you actually open your heart now and just sit with the birds. And that is being. And it is interesting. I'm talking a lot also about harmonic states of being. And this is what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You're coming into harmony. Now, when we live in a world of fear and anger and anxiety and traumas and whatever, a past that is still a heavy, a heavy I want to talk Spanish now, a heavy backpack mm -hmm. on us then we need to let it go. And the only way to let it go is letting go that influence that it has on us and have the courage to just be. And this is where you also recognize while this body might be finite, the being inside is endless. Mm -hmm. So the concepts in our mind the mindsets mean actually nothing. This is just the human experience and concept. Mm -hmm. And the being begins when you actually connect. You're not really connecting to the physical geese. You're connecting to their vibration, to their energy. This is the dialogue that you're having. This is the communication that allows you to be in that beautiful connection and being and harmony. Lovely. <laughs> we also talk yes. about very very much and we love that sovereign idea of being what what does that mean to you now 
It's I'm um, when I'm se separating myself from what other beings want me to be doing, and instead I switch to become in, in pure creation mode, regardless of what that means. So, for example, if you live in a place where you're oppressed or deeply oppressed as a citizen of that place shift your mind to a more peaceful place where you live the way you choose to live the way you choose to feel harmonious with your environment that's not always easy to do but i mean keep to yourself and become at peace within yourself envision that world you want to live in so then you can start shining that vibration that creates that new potential that allows it to materialize on this matrix if i can allow, uh, be allowed to use that expression yes so therefore if you spend your time in the dimension of what you want according to what i understand of how the universe works lately you're getting more of that Exactly. Regardless of your context of life. Mm -hmm. So then it becomes a question of why do we hesitate? Right? Mm -hmm. It's scary. The unknown, not knowing what we don't know, can be frightening. Are we going to allow ourselves to feel comfortable in the uncomfortable? I'm borrowing Cryon's expression here. Yes, yes, because this is really what it is. We are so comfortable in an uncomfortable space, but we don't want to give up that comfort because we're afraid of not knowing what the new comfort may bring. Yes. And this is very interesting. And that has to do with sovereign. This has to do with making these choices. And I also, I really love what you say. And I love that you said we need to be in a creation mode. This is not the manifestation. I want a new house. I want a new car. This is not mm -mm. creator mode. I want a new existence altogether. I want a new world, a new reality. Do we continue to repeat the same old pattern of oppression and taxation and domination and, and low vibrations? Exactly. Or are we going to take a, a different spiritual stance, you know? When you go to kidney garden, then you go to junior school, high school, college, university... Eventually, you graduate, you become a, a well-rounded adult, right? Spiritually, it, it is applicable too. Yes. Maybe uh, not in the same timeline. However, yeah. there is a point where we have to then make a conscientious decision to exercise that spiritual maturity to the betterment of the what's unfolding on this matrix. Exactly. Especially if you don't like what you're experiencing. Now more than ever, it's time to shift how you want to live. Exactly. And that is being sovereign. And that also is being in harmony again with nature. Earth is shifting. The cosmos is shifting. The cosmos has these cycles on a much bigger level than we have as a human being. As you said, from baby to kindergarten to high school to adulthood to sagehood where we possibly have already entered. And the same applies for everything. Everything has a cycle. And as we are aware, we are at the end of a cycle. The Mayans, the Hopi, everybody talks about it. The astrologers talk about coming into the Aquarian age. Funny, the whole world on different traditions talk all about the same thing. So the difference is that this time, collectively, we have an opportunity to step out of that oppression old control over and all of that and step into sovereignty and choice to create what we here to create a new earth and right. we're already living in it but it's not finished building yet we're still in a building stage and this is what we are all doing with wisdom it should never be a, a work completed exactly as you become wiser, you know about new things, new ways, and new approaches. So when does the work actually stop? But we have to make a decision 
to stop the same old, same old. Stop focusing on it altogether. Exactly. Okay, they say, well, I got to pay my bills this month. Sure. But what do you do the rest of the time? Exactly. It takes you five minutes to pay your bill, perhaps. What do you do the rest of the time? You keep focusing on that? Or do you focus on what you really want? I say, if you don't want bills, don't focus on bills. Pay them when they come. But focus on what you really want. And that you should get more of. And eventually, if you really don't want bills, don't think about bills. Think about what you really want. You want a life with no bills? Go get a life with no bills. Exactly. It's doable. Exactly. And this is this is exactly the point. If you are in being and sort of sovereign and you keep creating what you don't want, you're actually not creating because you are in a lower vibration that that just keeps you in the same old. Mm -hmm. Raising your vibration, we used to have, I still have it, an energy tank, and it will come back at some point. And in this energy tank, the energy tank really says where you are at. If you are depressed, if you are worrying about your bills or whatever you don't like in your life, you're incapable of creating. Because in that level of vibration that you are in, the oscillation and the frequencies, you can't create. You can only create when you're in a level of high vibration, when you are at, the, at least positive. Neg if you go into negativity, you're at such a low vibration that you can't create anything. All you will create is the same old and the same negative. Mm -hmm. So it's very beautiful. It's about where does your focus go? Don't put yes. attention. Uh, many people like the word attention and intention, but it has for me the part of tension where the focus goes is where the energy goes. So if it's low, it's low. If it's high, it's high. If it's on bills, it's on bills. If it's on doing what you want and what you love, it is on that. And of course, like when you're living in nature, you have this appreciation maybe more than in the city, but it's not impossible. When you are in harmony and when you don't harm anyone, it does actually manifest. May I appeal to those scientific mind? I will say this last statement, okay? Yes. In science, in, in, in quantum physics, and even in, in regular, the only time we can observe an electron mm -hmm. is when we shift our focus towards that observation. That's the only time it's actually there. The rest of the time, it's neither here or there. It's at multitude of places at the same time. It's a waiting to manifest as a potential as you shift your focus towards it. So as you take microscope, my electron microscope and you shift the lens towards observing electron, electron appear. Turn your eyes away from it. It's not there. Huh. Okay, cool. So if it's true with that, and we all agree matter is made of electro, uh, uh, of atoms and this and that. Energy. Well, you know, you know, you're like, hmm, okay, all right. Uh, would it be true if I start envisioning the world I want to live in, if it's going to start materializing because I shift my focus to that? Yes. And if you I are in harmony, my and if you don't hurt or harm someone, of course it must manifest. Having said that, of course, there's things manifesting. They are harmful and they're not in harmony, but they're not lasting. Mm -hmm. That's the big difference. Yeah, thank you. I think we're going to actually at that note because today we're going to be nice and sweet and short. And I hope we're giving okay. our audience a bit of food for thought. Mm -hmm. and, and food for really daring to be and stepping out of that having to do this and having to do the other and worrying about the past, the now, and a potential future that is actually what we are creating. It's in our hands. And I also want to say that this new earth, this future, that or this now as well, is in good hands with Bruno and many, many others out there and myself. So if we are taking more care where we put this world into our hands, then I feel it will be absolutely fabulous. 
Shine your light, set the example. Exactly. It's so simple. Thank you so much for today, Bruno, and we'll catch you soon.